Magandang umaga to those in the Philippines. Good morning and uh, those in the Philippines and good evening to those in the United States. Uh, Brother Dan King here. Again, carrying on our Thy Daily Word. Uh, thank you for those who are tuning in. And uh, we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 2 this morning. Proverbs 2 and a few other places that are uh, correlated. And uh, so just want you to let, tune in let you know that. Proverbs 2 verses 1 through 5. And so uh, we'll start with just some music here. And uh, hope you get a blessing out of that. Amen. Thanks for tuning in, uh, Brother Dan King here, and uh, we'll go ahead and just get started. And uh, just so you know, that app I'm using, that music, is Abiding Radio. It's a good app for good godly music. Abidingradio.org, and you have your choice of instrumental music, sacred, kids, bluegrass even, and seasonal. Uh, you know, so I guess we're getting near Easter, that might, what they call it Easter, uh, I call it Resurrection Sunday. Uh, so, uh, different times of the year, you got different seasonal music as well as just the regular sacred. So anyway, um, just thought you might get a blessing out of that. Go to abidingradio.org, all right? No commercials, just good stuff. So anyway, uh, all right, we'll go ahead and just uh, get started. I'll start out in a word of prayer. Uh, Lord Jesus, uh, thank you so much, Lord, for your pure words that uh, minister to our hearts. Thank you, God, that thou art God, Lord, God of the universe, and that we can come to you, Lord, directly. We don't need a priest. We don't need a man. Thank you so much, Lord, how we can come boldly before your throne of grace, Lord, through your Son, 
Jesus Christ, Lord, thank you for that. Lord, please to uh, bless this message this morning, Lord. And God, uh, if some doesn't know you as their Savior, Lord, may they come to know you today, Lord. This message, Lord, is really more for the Christian this morning, but just think of that now, Lord. May someone hear this uh, message, God. May they think about the things stated and their need for a Savior, Lord. And uh, God, uh, just bless this message, Lord. Use it for your honor, your glory. <clears throat> Amen. All right, amen. So, again, we're in Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1. We're reading verses 1 through 5 this morning. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. Proverbs chapter 2. We're continuing our series in Proverbs. Now a new chapter. All right. Uh, my son, if thou wilt receive my words, and hide thy commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and implying thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou Christ after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and search for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. Excuse me, I just need some water this morning. I got struggling with a little cough. Anyway, uh, all right, so a lot here, I, I entitled this message just basically searching for God's wisdom. That's for hidden treasures, you might notice, uh, and uh, that certainly is what it is, uh, God's wisdom, God's words. Um, you really want to truly find the wisdom of God, you need to search for it, seek for it, study it. And uh, so, but first of all, it starts off, you know, saying, my son. If thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with me. First of all, have you received the words of the living God? Some people don't even acknowledge that this is the words of God. These are the words. Every word. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I'm talking about the 66 books of the King James Bible. Those have been proven to be God's pure words. I'm not talking about outside those 66 books. You may see some extra books that are not part of his word. Thank you for that heart. I see somebody out there. Praise the Lord. All right. So have you received his words? Um, let me just kind of read a few verses. I'm going to go to 1 Thessalonians 2.13, talking about receiving God's word. All right. Have you received it? The words on his living page as the words of the living God. All right? Um, that's important. That's where salvation starts. If you don't believe this is the words of God, I don't think you could get saved. Know him as your Savior. All right? So 1 Thessalonians, I marked 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians, I went to 2. 1 uh, Thessalonians 2.13. That says, for this cause, also thank we God, without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which he heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in, the tr is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. All right. So there is the Apostle Paul speaking unto the Thessalonians. They received the word of God, not as the word of men, but as the word of God. Too many people will try to say that these words on the Bible, it's just words of men, uh, you know, just words just like Aristotle or uh, Socrates and so forth, okay? And uh, that's not true. Socrates, Aristotle don't have any prophecies that have come true. This, for one, that's one thing. Uh, this word of God has over, the Bible has over 300 prophecies that came true, all right? Uh, and where else you find just two, three, four, five men that even agree on everything nowadays, uh, you won't. Yet we have 40 authors of these 66 books of the King James Bible um, over the course of 1,500 years and three different languages, and yet they're all in agreement, okay? Uh, 40 different men. Um, 
down the words of God. All right. How is that possible when you can't even get five people in a room, even maybe in the same political party, to agree? Uh, you can't, all right? So, anyways, um, have you received the Bible as the word of God, right? The uh, Bible says, he despiseth words shall be, despiseth his words shall be destroyed, all right? I hope you love his word. Don't hate his word. I, ha I know I have a relative who hates his word. He despises it and he says mean things about it, which are all untrue. Um, these are the words of the living God. Uh, some people are misled. They're they listening to different voices on the internet and saying things that are totally opposite of what the word God is, unfortunately. So um, Acts 17.11 also speaks about how the early people in the early church received the words of the living God. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and search the scriptures daily where those things were so, right? So uh, important to acknowledge that these are the words of the living God. How serious do you take that, right? How serious are you taking me just going through some verses this morning, right? I was like, oh man, he's going over here, he's going over there, what? These are the words of the living God. You ought to receive them, you ought to listen, hear from God, right? to have that thirst and wanting to hear from God and searching the scriptures make sure what I'm saying is true those don't, don't accept it they're also these false religions false cults they just listen to their minister they listen to their priests so-called priests that you know listens to their interpretation of the Bible listen read for yourself receive his words receive make sure and search the scriptures make sure what that man is saying matches up. Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. Romans 3, 4, all right? Um, if it doesn't match up to what the Word of God says, you need to listen to that man and listen to God, right? Um, fear the Lord. We talked about that last time. We'll get to that later, later too, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fear of man bringeth a snare. We ought not to listen to man, but listen to God. Amen. All right, so my son, again, again, Proverbs 2, verse 1. My son, if thou wilt receive my words, receive it. Receive it today. Dig in it. Search it. Search, search through it. And hide his commandments with thee. Right? The King David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. How you say it right with God, you memorize his word, have his word buried in your heart, read it every day. Be like King David. He said, oh, my words are his meditation all the day long, right? Hide thy commandments with thee, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom, and incline thine heart to understanding. Man does not nat naturally just want to search God. He doesn't. This is why it says for a man to apply his heart to understand. You need to apply yourself. In our own nature, in our own flesh, we don't want to just start reading the Bible every morning. We don't want to, we don't seek God in our own nature. The Bible says, it also says, apply his heart to understanding. We need to apply our heart. Because why? Because our heart is deceitful. Above all things, desperately wicked. Who can know it, right? Who can know how far your heart could go if you just let it go where it wants to go? That's why we need God. That's why we need a Savior. That's why we all come short of His glory. That's why we need to keep that relationship with Him because in our flesh dwelleth no good thing. The Apostle Paul even said, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. He even acknowledged that in his, he needed to stay in a narrow way, needed, how he needed God. He was no without person without sin nobody is without sin only jesus walked his face of the earth without sin even the apostle paul acknowledged that in his flesh dwelleth no good thing all right in our nature man's nature he does not seek god let me just read first corinthians 2 14 the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god there you go he doesn't receive the natural man doesn't receive that's why it talks about re receiving his words the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, 
because they are spiritually discerned. All right. Man in his natural state does not seek God. That's why he needs to apply his heart to understanding. That's why he needs to seek him. Just a little while ago, I was reading Romans 3.10. This is man in his natural state as well. As written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. None that seeketh after God. That's man in his natural state. Man in his natural state does not look for God. Unfortunately, that is the majority of men now. If they're searching for him, they're searching in, in their own way, their own righteousness. They're putting on their own righteousness and not putting on the righteousness of God. Seek him. Search for him. The Bible says in Isaiah to seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. All right. And uh, while he is near in this life, by the way, don't wait till death comes and knocks on your door. Uh, that's too late, friend. Um, Hebrews 9, 27. So point unto man once to die, and after this is the judgment. Um, search for him. Seek the scriptures. Seek the scriptures. And see how they do testify of the Lord Jesus Christ. Seek him. Search him for him while ye can be found. All right. And we're talking about seeking. Look at verses 3 and 4. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifts up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures, then thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Uh, searching, searching the scriptures. Again, Jesus said, search the scriptures. For in me they it, for in me they testify of me, and you will find eternal life. Alright, so one thing in the scriptures, you know how you could go to heaven. In the scriptures, it tells you. It tells you, in fact, in first John chapter 5, verse 13. Said, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know you have eternal life. All right. Uh, so, one thing in the scriptures you have your heart open. You receive his words as the word of truth. You receive it, these words, as the word of God, and you search for it. And you find. You find. All right. The Bible also says later in Proverbs, I think, actually, we just read. I think Brother Emmanuel may have covered it last week how wisdom cries without uttering her voice in the streets. In Romans verse, uh, excuse me, Proverbs 1 verse 20. Okay, wisdom is out there at our disposal. Wisdom is here right through the full revelation of Genesis 1 through Revelation. We have the full revelation of God. You know, Moses didn't have anything in writing. You know that. Um, and he wrote down those first five books of the Bible, right? He heard directly from God. He didn't have the full revelation. The Apostle Paul did not have the full revelation. He had the Old Testament. We have the full revelation of God. Praise the Lord. Let's take advantage of that. Let's seek through it. Seek the word of God. Do we cry unto God and ask for more wisdom, more understanding? The Ethiopian eunuch, he was lifting up his voice for understanding. He was. And then the, the evangelist Philip joined that chariot and said, Understandest what thou readest? I think that was a picture of crying after knowledge and lifting up his voice for understanding. Then came someone else along because he said, how can else someone, um, how can I know unless someone else show me? What is this talking about? He was looking at Isaiah 53. He needed some help in understanding. He was crying out. I believe someone who's truly seeking God, even someone in the midst of a jungle, far away from the any Christian, Christians, any, any Bible, I believe they truly are seeking God. God will send a missionary out to the middle of that jungle in some remote place. I believe he will. All right. Search the God. Search the scriptures and see that they are true. Taste the word. Taste. The Bible says in Psalms, taste the Lord and see that he is good. All right. Amen. And, of course, what does it talk about searching for his hidden treasures? You know, you don't find hidden treasures just along places you're just casually walking <laughs> along the streets and um, remote in, in Philippines or whatever. 
you have to go to some remote, difficult places, right? Some places far out there, maybe hard to get to, maybe through some uh, large, high mountains or through some valleys. Um, so one thing, you have to know where to start, even knowing where to start digging and that begin with, and then you have to then diligently uncover and seek to uncover those hidden treasures. What a great analogy how we are to approach the word of God. We are to search for wisdom and search for the knowledge of God as hidden treasures. We don't just casually read through the word of God and inspect, maybe always to get wisdom or get the knowledge of God. I'm talking about the knowledge of God, folks, the mind of God. Uh, as a Christian, you have to have the mind of Christ, right? Uh, that's not, you know, and as a Christian, we are predestinated to become the image of this Jesus Christ. We are conformed to be the image of Jesus Christ, right? We are to be more and more like him. Our destination, putting that in right context, it's not talking about um, Calvinism here or anything, but we are our destination, Romans 8, 29, is to be conformed to the image of Christ. And how do we do that? By being in his word, reading it. And, and bearing it in our hearts and searching through it, right? How do we search through it? One, one thing the Bible does tell us to study, right? And we're actually commanded to study. And uh, good morning, Shelly. I see you out there. Thank you for the hello. All right. Um, first Timothy, I think it's First Timothy 2.15, commands us to study. Is that First Timothy 2.15? Let me make sure. Study. Study to know his word. Uh, maybe it's 2 Timothy. Sorry. Yes. 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Right? Do you just skin the surface when it comes to the word of God? Or are you just kind of, you know, as a Christian, you have to be on digging in learning more, studying, and what does this really mean? What does this, you know, try to maybe get our hands on what is God really trying to say to us sometimes, right? You know, and we have the King James Bible. It's the pure words of God. Praise the Lord. Get, get yourself an English, a good English dictionary. That's all you need. You don't need the Greek and Hebrew. We have it perfected in the English. Get yourself a good King James dictionary. That's a King James dictionary. What well, are good Bible dictionaries? I, I recommend the Webster's 1828 dictionary. You can get that online and download the app and find out what every word says in the King James Bible. Do a study on the word wisdom. Do a study on the word fear of the Lord. I I did already. We got the term fear of the Lord. It shows up 30 times. All right, and, and you you can get blessed. You you learn. You learn so much, all right? Um, you can be blessed by the Word of God, just doing word searches, all right? Not, there's a casual reading. I recommend that. Try and get through it. A systematic reading. <coughs> systematic reading, and I also recommend studying. Two different things, right? You got your maybe three chapters you read per day, three and a half chapters per day, and maybe your one chapter of Proverbs you read each day. Um, and then... Uh, Excuse me. One second. I think someone's at the door. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Very sorry for that. Okay. So study to show thyself approved on a guy. Yeah, no one's there. I'm just making sure. In the middle of this, and someone's like knocking at the door, I thought. But study to show thyself approved on a guy. A workman that need not to be ashamed. Now, a workman that basically goes along with also how a person may be digging for treasure in those remote places in, in obscure places in the world, right? Uh, they, they are workmen. They're digging hard. They're looking hard for those treasures, right? Finding gold and silver. Those are not easy things to find, all right? Um, I don't know where to find it. Do you? <laughs> uh, it's in, it's, as it says in Proverbs, uh, hidden treasures. It talks about hidden treasures. There are hidden treasures to be found in the Word of God. If you just study it, search it, search the scriptures and see that they speak of Jesus Christ 
to speak of eternal life, all right? Speak of Jesus, basically. I believe every page in the Word of God speaks of Jesus. He is God, man, thus in the flesh. You can find him on every page. I believe you can, all right? There's foreshadowing of him with the law and, and the sacrifices, and then there's also the, the picture of him with the Passover and the blood on the doorpost that gives a blood on, on the top part and then the right and the left, making a picture of a cross, and there's so much in there, all right? Um, if you just search it and seek it, you can find it, all right? Um, so... Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and lift up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest for her as silver, and search for her as for hid treasures, again, Proverbs 2, and verse 3 and 4, then thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord. Then you understand God. You seek him and find him, and you understand the fear of the Lord. That's what is interesting. We are, in our natural state, do not fear God, I don't think. I think we need to be taught the fear of God. In our natural state, we don't fear God just as a young child, a baby, doesn't in their nature fear their parents. There has to be some kind of letting know who is boss. And that's what's wrong in today's society, by the way. We're going somewhere else. That even um, we have these rebellious children because they people are afraid to discipline their children. Well, it's biblical to discipline your children, right? There's only one way they'll learn to fear. Um, their parents. And if they don't fear their mom and dad, certainly they'll never fear, they may never fear God. The fear of the Lord must be learned, all right? Fear of the Lord must be learned. Let me show you a place that says that. Psalm 34, verse 11. Psalm 34, verse 11. It talks about teaching the fear of the Lord. Psalm 34, 11. Now we need to seek for it and learn it. And, uh, and search and seek for the fear of the Lord. Um, meaning, meaning to, that's the beginning of wisdom. The beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Lord. And we need to seek it. Search it out. Alright. And so that's Psalm 34 verse 11. Come ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desires life and loves many days that he may see good? All right. So man in his nature needs to learn the fear of the Lord. And something else interesting, I mentioned it last week uh, about the fear of the Lord. I believe the fear of the Lord could be actually the word of God. In Psalm 19, I mentioned it last week and I'll mention it again. Uh, Psalm 19, where is it? Uh, it speaks of the Word of God in different, um, describes the Word. Word of God is described in many different ways. Just as the Lord Jesus Christ is called different names. He's called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. The Word of God is called different things. The Word of God is called the Law of the Lord, Converting the Soul, Psalm 19, verse 7. Um, it's called the Testament of the Lord, Making Wise and Simple. It's called the Statutes of the Lord, which are right. It's called the commandment of the Lord, enlightening the eyes. And then we see in verse 9, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. And, the judgments, and it's also called the judgment of the Lord, are true and righteous altogether. So all those things are describing the word of God, the law of the Lord, um, testimony of the Lord, statutes of the Lord. Um, then it mentions the fear of the Lord as the fifth thing there. I believe it's also, to me, it's also speaking of the word of God. You seek through the Word of God. You learn the fear of God. Understand the fear of the Lord, right? You search for it, and then you understand the Word of God more perfectly. Search for it, seek it, study it. Study to show thyself through of God, that you be a workman that need not to be ashamed, by the way. So many people are not studying the Word of God for themselves. They're listening instead to the minister. They're listening to themselves and getting caught in false cults, false religions, Iglesia, no Cristo, I call it. You may say Iglesia, ni Cristo. Um, where they're trained just to listen to their minister and then departing from the words of the living God. Right. Uh, any religion that tells you Jesus is not God, don't follow them. All right. Uh, the Bible says that they, uh, I think it's Isaiah, if they don't speak not according to this word, uh, if they speak not according to this word, do not hear them. 
all right? I think that's Isaiah 8, 20, if I remember correctly, right? Do not listen to them, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to his word, it's because there is no light in them. If what the minister is saying is not according to God's word, they I do not have the truth. That's why we are to search the scripture and make sure they line up with the God. As the variants I mentioned in Acts 17, 11, they searched the scriptures and, and made sure those things that even the Apostle Paul was saying were true. All right. Search the scriptures and see that they are true. Understand the fear of the Lord and find, find the knowledge of God. All right. Find God, find him in his wisdom, find his knowledge, search it, love it, bury it in your heart. Treasure his word. Search through his word and like hidden treasures. I don't know, just go one last place. I found this interesting. Isaiah 33. If you want to travel with me there. Isaiah 33. And I'll read verse 5. Isaiah 33, verse 5. The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. I think it's just talking about the future, millennial reign, and wisdom, and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. All right? I think this is talking about his future reign. And then it says, and strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. How about that? The fear of the Lord is his treasure. The fear of God, this is God's treasure. Search through it. Seek it, love it, search through it in like hidden treasures. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. These are, the fear of the Lord is his word. Read it, bury it in your heart, my friend. All right, I think I'm going to stop there. Uh, we will have Brother Rick doing the next part of Proverbs tomorrow, verses 6 onward, and then Emmanuel on Thursday morning, and then... Again, our friend Giovanni, Sunday morning once again. So, I uh, hope you're getting a blessing out of these, and uh, we will continue on. We only have these Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday mornings during the week. Let's we'll put that in, at Phil Peel time, that is. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, for your, in the United States um, in the evening. And uh, uh, that would be Saturday evening in. Uh, as well in the United States as well. So okay. So anyway, um, thank you for tuning in. It's once Brother Dan King. And, uh, any questions? Do feel free to message me. Make sure you know the Lord is your Savior. Search for Him. And through the Scriptures, trust the Word of God, not man, and not yourself. Uh, fear of man brings a snare. <laughs> okay. And fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. We are to fear God not man all right let us put our trust in god not man. man let god be true to every man alive trust his word his living word amen all right let me just end there god bless you